Hello and welcome to Motors for the Masses. And today we will be doing a six cylinder touring bike versus a three cylinder touring bike. So let's roll the intro and get cracking. Crack! Here is a BMW K1600 GT made in 2012. Indeed, it's got 19,000 miles on the clock and it's up for £8,489. So now, this side is a Triumph Sprint GT 1050 made in 2016. Indeed, this one's only got 9,000 miles on the clock and it's up for £6,489. Now you're there. So this is not a head-to-head -head video in the traditional sense. Simply because the BMW has 550cc more and twice as many cylinders as the Triumph does. However, both are great touring bikes. And the purpose of this video is to see if the Triumph is as good as, better or worse than the BMW as a tourer. The BMW actually has a 1,649cc engine, developing 160 horsepower and 129 pounds foot of torque. The Triumph has a 1050cc engine, developing 128 horsepower and 80 pounds foot of torque. Both bikes have twin 320mm front discs and four piston calipers. The BMW has a 320mm rear disc and six but the Triumph has a 255mm rear disc. Yeah, but only has one hole in the exhaust. Whatever. Both bikes have 17-inch wheels, front and back. They've both got 120mm front tyres, whereas the Triumph has got 180mm rear, and the BMW has 190mm rear. The Triumph has a chain final drive, but the BMW has a shaft final drive. The Triumph has a top speed of 160 miles an hour. Whereas the BMW has a top speed of 148 miles per hour. Both bikes have a total of 117 litres of luggage space. The Triumph has a 20 litre fuel tank, whereas the BMW has a 26 and a half litre fuel tank. And both bikes on paper do around 35 to 40 miles to the gallon. The Triumph weighs in at 239 kilos wet, 268 with all the luggage, whereas the BMW is 319 kilos wet and 348 kilos with all the luggage on. What are the seat heights on both bikes? Well, the Triumph has a seat height of between 815 and 830 millimetres, yep. whereas the BMW is 810 to 830 millimetres. Very interesting. Does that mean anything to you? Yes. Pardon? No, exactly. Let's move what? on. What? <laughs> now you could argue that the longitudinal suspension on the BMW is more superior to the Shura suspension on the Triumph, but we're not going to know that for sure until we're out riding them. But for now, before we go riding, let's get some lunch, shall we? And last, food! <laughs> Right then, here we go on the Triumph. That nice triple engine purring away under there. Very familiar sound for me. And instantly I can tell, not only is it familiar, because I do have a speed triple, but it's very comfortable. Simple to corner, even with two of us on. Simple to ride, lovely bike. Nice gear change. I don't even know Patrick's on it. Takes the corners effortlessly. Nice raspy little three cylinder there, purring away. 
now this obviously has the extra screen on it that makes it um, nicer on the buffeting or less buffeting it's a very blustery windy day today and I am completely planted on this road lots of gusty winds but I'm not really feeling it gear change is very simple nice light clutch unlike my speed triple which is a very heavy clutch easy to pull away no problem at all I have to say the uh, mirrors are um, quite small and out of the main mirror I can see only about uh, I'd say 65 percent but this one's got the little blind spot mirrors on it as well and it does make a big difference very easy to ride this I know Patrick's there because I can feel his legs on my hips but I don't feel any, that he is there when I'm cornering cornering which is like cornering but um, in a bit of a choppy way <laughs> so in a minute I will hand over to Patrick and he can tell you how he thinks the bike feels uh, but before I do um, I have to say it's very comfortable the seat is lovely and comfortable uh, this one's got the Oxford heated grips on it I also have those on my speed triple so I know they're very good um, very simple switch gears uh, nice easy to read dash although the speedo is a little bit small the numbers are a bit small it's not a major issue but um, they are quite small there uh, rev counter right in the middle um, and the clock on the right hand side fuel temperature mileage very easy to see such a simple bike to ride it feels quite light um, when you manoeuvre, as I say, I know he's on there, but uh, it's very simple. No problem at all in terms of uh, being able to handle two people on this bike. And I know Patrick's only a child and uh, he doesn't weigh a huge amount, but even so, I don't even know he's there. I do like how simple it is to use this. So we're now about to go on uh, a road that is very open, very long and straight. But uh, it allows for winds to come flying across the fields. So we'll see what these blustery winds will do to us as we're riding along. Certainly feel them. My head is being knocked about a tiny bit. It's not horrendous. 60 mile an hour road and I'm doing 50 and the traffic is utterly ridiculous can't go anywhere these days well you can definitely feel the uh, blustering wind coming but you don't really notice it a huge amount I mean yes it's pushing me but not to the state where I'm worried got plenty of poke if it wants to have so then let's hand over to Patrick and see what he thinks I also quite like it it's pretty nice yeah I do like it the comfiness yes very good for two people we have quite a lot of space here um, if you have a child, for example, me, it has something on the, their back to rest on, so their back doesn't like go all the way back and they have to hold on to your dad or mum very hard. But you bend around the corners, it's sturdy, it, it's not like wobbly when you go past. It's quite fun. It goes at pretty decent speed, it's very nice. Well, in terms of the riding position, I have to say that my legs are very comfortable 
um, my knees do not feel as though they're too high um, I'm leaning quite nicely um, a good position on the handlebars um, I am leaning rather than sitting up but um, the grips are decent although because these are Oxford grips they're not brilliant so they're not uber spongy they're okay they're not horrible but they're not amazing It's quite good in potholes when it goes down, the suspension's good. Yeah, that's good. It's not that bumpy. I don't feel a buzz in my bum or legs. It's pretty comfy. I have a lot of room to sit between my dad and me. There's room so we don't like squish together. Um, it's very good for two seater, like very, very good. I would say. It's one of the best bikes I've ever rode. But we still have to see about the BMW. So, because that might be better or worse, but we'll come for that later. And the, far, the speed is great. As you see, me and my dad are going a lot faster. I can't see the speed, so I can't tell you. You have space for on the sides two helmets if you have another person that you want a helmet for. On the back, you can maybe put your food there. The luggage space is lovely. You could basically have clothes, stuff like you're going on holiday. As I say, I love it. Don't know about my dad, haven't heard, but I hope it's good. Well, it handles corners very well. It goes to the side, but even, even if there's luggage on it, a lot of maybe heavy luggage, it won't, it, it doesn't like tip over or become wobbly more to the right when it's supposed to be without luggage. It's pretty much the same. I mean, to be honest, this is the perfect day to test this bike because there's two of us on it. It's very, very windy and uh, it gives us a good indication as to whether you'd be blown around a lot when riding and I feel very comfortable and very confident on this bike well it hasn't got a massive amount of power and it is quite weighty in comparison to say the speed triple but it's got enough power and I do enjoy it I'm leaning a tiny bit to the left but there's only to counter the wind and I've got no worries apparently this is the tail end of a storm that is hitting the north of England quite badly at the moment and the gusts are coming in quite hard now across these open fields oh we're racing the train we're racing a train! And we're going to lose because of traffic. Not that I would speed, of course, anyway. We are doing 55 and a 60, so that's okay. Right then, now for the BMW. Instantly, I can feel the BMW. Oh, listen to that straight six, that is awesome. So smooth and so quiet, yet raspy when you want it to. Feels like it's just coasting with the ignition off. The seating position is much more upright on this than it is on the Triumph. Seems very smooth. We're going to go down the same roads just to make sure it's a fair and equal ride. Now despite the weight of this, it handles the corners so, so smoothly, you really don't feel that weight at all. Not at all. Oh, I'll tell you what, this is in a different league. A different league altogether. You really don't feel that weight, I'm surprised by that. 
just pulls away so smoothly. Oh, listen to that straight six. Oh. Yeah, nice. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not a rocket ship, just like the Triumph's not a rocket ship, but this feels more effortless, and I know you've got 550cc more. And the purpose of this video is not to say, well, this one's better because it's faster and smoother and it accelerates better. It's how it feels when you ride it. That's the important bit. And that's what I'm going for here, the feel when you ride it. I mean, this one it just sort of wafts from side to side on the road quite nicely. Just wafts. Whereas the Triumph turns and steers. Does that make sense? Great. I don't think so, mate. Don't even try it. <laughs> Seriously. I just love how this feels. It's just so effortless. You don't feel the acceleration. It just sort of propels itself forward yet you seem to sit completely still in the middle of the bike it doesn't lunge you around you don't feel as though if you open it up it's going to push you back because it doesn't because it just pulls it just feels so nice i can't believe how quiet that engine is and how smooth it is um, you've got an adjustable screen on this and it goes quite fast so look that's the screen right down at its minimum we're in sixth gear now. I'm just going to put the screen up. And it keeps going to that. I mean, look at that. I mean, I can now see through that. It's uh, The top of it is in my eye line, I'll be honest. But I've got zero buffeting now. I'm going to put it back down again. And then we'll see how it feels when I'm going down the other road that's very very blustery and the winds are coming across the fields. It'll be interesting to see because obviously the weight behind this as to whether it's uh, pushing me over more or not. Oh the the gear change and the clutch is so light and the gear change is effortless. This may be four years older than the Triumph but it feels five years newer. Now don't get me wrong the Triumph is a nice bike but as I said, this is in a different league altogether. And I know you're paying an extra two grand, but you think of the price of these brand new and what you're getting for that extra two grand. Weight-wise, you don't notice the difference. If anything, because you've got that massive slab of a six-cylinder quite low down across the front of the bike, it balances it out superbly. And you really don't feel the weights, even when you're pushing it around, because it's everything is low down it doesn't feel weighty when you're maneuvering it manually now it's blustery as hell now there's wind coming across the fields and i can't feel anything it's almost like this bike's going come on what have you got no i'm not budging i refuse to move i can't even hear the engine i can't hear the exhaust i can't hear it change gear I just know it's changing gear because my foot's moving and the numbers are changing on the dash. I'm going to slow down to 40 in fourth, then I'm going to accelerate in the different modes and see what difference it makes. So we're currently in comfort mode. Or rain mode actually, yeah very nice. Right, what other modes have we got? Um, how do we change the mode? Look in menu. It's okay. Put it in normal mode. How do you put it in normal mode?
Okay, road mode, dynamic mode, rain, road mode. So we've got road mode for the suspension, I feel. And normal mode. Well, it doesn't seem to want to go into normal. Why isn't it going into normal? How do you get into normal? Hello? Oh, there we go. All right, so normal mode. So again, we're going to slow down in fourth gear at 40. And not a big difference. Now let's put it into sport mode. <laughs> takes a bit of used to getting, uh, well, it takes a bit of time getting used to how everything works. Come on. Why won't it go into sport mode? I don't understand how this works. Sport mode. Road, no, road. No, no, no. Which button just goes that one? See, look, it goes up and down. Nothing seems to put it into that bloody mode. What if I hold the button? No. How stupid. I hate it. I hate it. That makes no sense whatsoever. Well, I'm sure sport mode's a little bit quicker. Who bloody cares? I've had enough now. It's annoyed me. <laughs> we'll leave it in normal. Anyway, I can't feel the wind. It feels great. Marvellous. Move on. Typical Lumen Germans. They make everything so unbelievably great, but unbelievably complicated to use. I'm not giving up. It's really annoying. What push and hold that? Double tap. Double three times. Three taps, no. What, how did I do it before? Oh, there we go. Oh, you twist it. Oh, I see. Oh, we've got radio as well. Oh, okay. All right, so yeah, it's just getting used to it. Oh, so you twist it in. Oh, okay, interesting. All right, so fourth gear, about 40 miles an hour. Took a while, didn't it? Yeah, you can feel it rev a bit more. You can't hear it rev a bit more because you can't hear the bike. So let's try it up, normal, nod, into normal mode, twist that. Yeah, we're all good. Everything's good. <laughs> all right. Let's enjoy the bike. Okay, so, screen up. Wow, I instantly feel all the buffeting disappear from the side of my head. And the noise, that is fantastic. Massive difference. And that screen looks huge. Yeah, very pleasing. Oh, I do like that. Right, what an amazing bike to ride. Now I've worked that out, I no longer am annoyed with it. <laughs> So that twists in and out, and that basically selects it. Oh, okay. Cruise control on this as well. Uh, heated grips, obviously, but they are BMW heated grips. Uh, all sorts of buttons down here. You can turn your traction control off if you want to. We don't want to do that. Uh, the modes, so we've got road mode, rain mode, and um, so it's very different suspension modes and very different ride modes. Or three ride modes and three suspension modes. I've got it in road and normal, and it all seems very normal. Unbelievably smooth. It feels lovely, to be honest. Very pleasing. He's probably thinking, wait a minute, that was a guy on a BMW, and he nodded at me. What's that about? I mean, yes, we've got a massive gust of wind coming through, and I've, I notice it a tiny bit, but not as much as I did on my Triumph, and even then, that wasn't a lot. It plants itself very, very nicely on the road. Very comfortable. Very pleasing to ride. You feel very safe on this. Very safe indeed. Well, very pleasurable. Right, let's see what Patrick thinks. Now 
now we're back on the road. My dad forgot to say that the mirrors have a hundred percent visibility through the mirrors. You can see in them; it's a hundred percent visible. In my opinion, I prefer the, the BMW K1600 GT more than the Triumph Sprint GT 1050 because, but it's my opinion, you can have your different opinions, don't argue with it. I think the ability to corner is way better. You have uh, more space between each other like you can move back if you want move a little bit forward doesn't really matter um the back is a bit higher so your your hips can get on it um it's it's faster i would say like most people fast is good and a lot of people like fast so yeah it has handled them very well with the suspension so i'd say they're both very good you're allowed to have your own opinions I don't mind but my opinion is I like this one more the BMW K 1600 is better is my opinion oh my back no okay I changed my mind, the suspension isn't that good on this one because my back just really hurt but on the other one it took it completely fine as you see I just had to nod because there's another bike and I had to say no comfy but my thighs hurt more than the Triumph so I say the Triumph is more comfier So let's have a summary. First of all, what did you think of the Triumph? Um, nice. Um, I would say there's features that I like more on that than that, and there's more like? features I like on that and that. Okay, what do you like on that better than that? The comfiness. You see, um, on this it hurt my thighs right here. Okay. And then on that it doesn't really hurt. That okay, much. so it's more comfortable as a passenger. Yeah. I would say the opposite. It's more comfortable as a rider on there. One, because of the um, handlebar positions, they're more upright and you just feel more comfortable sitting in the seat than you do on that leaning slightly. I say there's more of a sports tourer and that's more of a tourer tourer. Um, 
and the seating position and the seat feel were both very comfortable, I'll be honest, but that one I enjoyed sitting in more than that. Um, I also found manoeuvring them, even though that's like 80 kilos heavier, manoeuvring it, this is easier because of the low center of gravity and the way the engine is positioned is much nicer than it is on this. And the same when I'm riding it, it's so much easier to move around on that than it is on the Triumph. The BMW is really spot on in terms yes, of that. But I think I mixed up when I was talking to Mike, I kind of called both and mixed them up. I called that the 1600 first, then I called <laughs> it the Sprint. Okay, don't worry about it, I'll, I'll let you off. <laughs> All right. I forgot Work it out. Let which. me know in the comment section below if you can see mistakes he makes. I mean, he is only eight, so, you know, fair enough. Yeah, I, I called that the K1600. <laughs> then I called it the Sprint. Did and you? Was, yeah. And then I was like, no, what? Don't worry about it. Don't worry. It's fine. Um, I mean, this definitely, even though this is what, four years newer? Yeah, four, sorry, four years older. Yeah. The BMW is four years older. It feels six or seven years newer than the Triumph. This feels that's, like more technology. I thought that's 2016, that's 2012. No, the other way around. That's 2012, that's 2016. I also got that one too. But no, but that's, that just shows how they feel. This one feels a lot newer to ride and be on than the Triumph does. Don't get me wrong, the Triumph is nice. And if you want to go touring, it's a great bike to go touring on. Um, in terms of the way they ride and what you need to do with them, I think the Triumph is fantastic. And it is two grand less than the BMW that is four years older. But if you're on a long tour, perfect. The BMW is perfect. If it was my money, I personally would spend the extra two grand and go for the BMW. Once I fiddled out the annoying um, twistiness on the uh, wheel and everything, I should have looked that up first. Um, but once I worked that out, it's simple to use. Um, Obviously you've got the six modes, you've got three sort of suspension and brake modes um, and then three rider modes and, there's and um, here. getting them worked out I don't think is a massive problem but I really do like the way that BMW rides, yeah. really do. As you can see, you can't see but if you come here you can see there's buttons here. I did, I did point On out the buttons when I was talking. Our SRC mode now, we and could spend all day talking about the features on these bikes and we're not doing that that's not the purpose of this video because i have a club um, um, but if you want to see the full specs then please pop along to superbike warehouse where these two bikes are both for sale and you can have a look and see what the specs are um, i don't know if they've got all the specs listed on there but there's loads of specs around on the internet for you to see and i really do recommend riding both these bikes to see how you feel about them um, but personally the BMW for me. Personally, definitely. also the BMW. Yeah, mm. fantastic. And that brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you much for joining us. We'll be back next time with something else. Will. So, well, maybe Will. Yeah, maybe Will. It might be but just him. But mostly, probably just me. Yeah. So until next time, please ride and drive carefully. And have fun. But have fun. Close. Oh, okay. I'll let you off. You haven't done it in a while. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. Bye. I guess. I don't know. Well, yes, it is by. You want a drink now, don't you? Yeah, but the camera's still on, so that means we don't do by yet until you turn it off. Well, you don't say by and then turn it off, do you? You say by, fades out, then they go. But you need to walk oh, in there and stop. turn it off, and then I say bye. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? All right, stay there then. Stay there. No, stay there. Are you ready? Focus on you. There you go. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Okay, so until next time, please ride and drive carefully. But, and have fun. Bye. Well worth the wait. <laughs>